Use substitution and integration by parts are two very common methods of integration that you would learn about as you're learning about calculus. And each of them can be kind of challenging on their own at times. So when you put them together, you'd think that would be a really challenging problem. Well, recently in one of my weekly live streams, which I'm doing every Monday night at five o'clock Pacific, I went over an example of what it looks like when you have to apply use substitution with integration by parts in the same problem. And I think you might find that very helpful. So I wanted to show you the portion of that live stream where I did that problem so that by the end of this video, you should be much more comfortable with what happens when you have to apply both of these integration methods at once. If that sounds good to you, be sure to stick around to the end of the video. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. First make a substitution and then use integration by parts to evaluate the integral. So in this problem, we're gonna have to use in, uh, integration by parts and use substitution. Okay, fortunately, both of these formulas are on my Calculus 2 study guide. Again, link is down in the description below and the pinned comment as well if you wanna check that out. Available for instant download, so go grab yourself a copy of that. But both of these formulas are on there, so that should kind of help make things a little bit easier for us. But we're gonna be using use substitution with integration by parts in this example. Fortunately, it does tell us to first make a substitution and then use integration by parts. So that at least helps eliminate one choice that we would have to make, which is which thing to do first. <laughs> um, so we know we're going to have to make a substitution. So we'll start there first of all. When you're doing use substitution, first thing you need to figure out is what are you going to call your U? What's going to be the thing that you substitute? Well, Typically, when I'm thinking about that, I like to kind of think about what are your options? What are the different choices of what you can make U? You're never going to want to make U the entire thing. So we're definitely not going to say U equals T cubed times E to the negative T squared. It's not going to get us anywhere. You also, so we don't want to say T cubed E to the negative T squared. You don't want to do that. You also never want to say u equals t. u equals just whatever variable you're dealing with. Because again, that's not going to get you anywhere. So we can right off the bat eliminate those two choices. Okay, so what choices do we have? Well, usually you just want to kind of think about piece by piece, basically what options are there. Well, we could call it just this piece, so just t cubed. And we're just brainstorming here, just throwing down options. So don't think too much about it. Just kind of break down the different pieces. We could say that u is going to be this whole thing, e to the negative t squared. We could say that u is going to be just the negative t squared, just the power. Or maybe we could say that u is just going to be just t squared, just the positive version. I would say if you have a situation like this, negative t squared and positive t squared, usually that's not really going to make a difference because they just differ by a constant. When integrating differing by a constant usually means there's no difference, but um, not always. I mean, certainly worth considering these two different options. But let's go ahead and kind of think about how this is going to go. Um, and this is a very weird example because typically the advice that I give um, and that you would probably, you know, hear in your textbook or from your teacher or professor, when you're trying to think about what to make your U, typically what you want to do is pick your u so that the derivative of that thing is somewhere else in your equation. Well, let's just kind of quickly think about what the derivative is of these four different options that we have here. First of all, the derivative of t cubed is 3t squared. The derivative of e to the negative t squared uh, is going to require chain rule. I'm not going to go into all the steps of finding that, but just quickly, it would be e to the negative t squared times negative 2t. The derivative of negative t squared would be negative 2t, and the derivative of t squared would be positive 2t. So these are kind of our, our options. Um, and you want to think about this because if the derivative of the thing that you're choosing for u is somewhere else in your equation, usually that's going to result in those things canceling out and creating a simpler problem for you. In this case, we can see that if we make our u the t cubed, the derivative is three times t squared. We do have a negative t squared right here. So right off the bat, that seems like a decent option. Um, of course, they differ by a constant. Again, that's fine. We have a negative one as our coefficient of this t squared here, and we have a positive three as our coefficient here. Again, differing by a constant usually is not really worth worrying about because what we care about is the t squareds canceling out. However, before we kind of go down this route, 
the fact that this negative t squared is in an exponent here is going to prevent it from canceling out the way we want it to. That's kind of a weird thing to say without showing you what that means, but you know, if you want to get a little better idea, go ahead and proceed. Go ahead and let's just, you know, pretend for a sec that you're going to say u equals uh, t cubed and go down the path of solving that with u substitution. You would find that the t squared in the in this du term that we would introduce would not cancel with the t squared in this exponent here. So it wouldn't end up helping us because we would still have the t squared up in the 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 power um, and it wouldn't be able to simplify in a way that would allow us to integrate with respect to u. So um, although this does look like the best option right off the bat, it's actually not going to end up working, unfortunately. Okay, so let's go ahead and eliminate that option. Um, here, right off the bat, we can see if we made our u this whole thing, this whole term right here, uh, we would introduce another e to the negative t squared, which is going to get in the way somewhere else. So again, that's probably not going to work very well which really just leaves us with these two options. Okay, so between these two options, uh, seems like they're not the greatest choices, but obviously they're the only two choices we have left. <laughs> so we got to pick one of them. The question is, which one? Well, usually if you have two options that are super similar like this and just differ by a constant, it's usually best to go with the one that includes the constant in it. So in this case, u equals negative t squared. Because um, again, when you get to the actual canceling out step and the integrating step, differing by a constant, you're still going to be able to pull that constant out. It's not really going to change the integration you have to go through. Um, so it doesn't really make it really all that different, to be honest, but it will make, uh, make things a little bit simpler for you if you just include it in there. So let's go ahead and proceed with that. Um, and again, this seems weird. seems like it's not really going to help us, but that's where the, the integration by parts portion is going to come into play, which is going to be interesting. We're going to go with u equals negative t squared. So the first step of doing u substitution, once you once you have figured out your u, is to then figure out your du. Well, again, the derivative of d of I'm sorry, du is just going to be the derivative of u. The derivative of negative t squared is negative two t dt. We're going to put that in there as well. That's just kind of a again a little uh, notational caveat of u substitution. So now what we would want to do is typically you'd want to take this and solve it for dt. Well, we could do that just simply in this case by dividing both sides by negative 2t. And we get dt equals du over negative 2t. Okay, so now what we can do is go back to our original integral, which let me just rewrite that down here. We had the integral of t cubed times e to the negative t squared dt. Okay, so now once we have figured out our u and our du, what we want to do is substitute, or I'm sorry, our u and our dt, we want to substitute uh, this piece out of our equation for u. So we're going to replace this with a u, and that is a negative t squared there. And then we're going to replace our dt with the thing that we just solved for dt. So du over negative 2t. So if we do that, we're still going to have t cubed out here. We're going to have e to the u. And then we're going to have times du over negative 2t. Yeah. So seems weird, right? This doesn't really seem like this got us any closer. Let's think uh, kind of how this will simplify though, because what you're going to find is this t cubed is going to cancel with, or I'm sorry, this t here is going to cancel with one of the t's here. So this is going to change to a two and this is going to cancel. So we're going to get the integral of t squared times e to the u du, and then we can pull out a negative one half from the integral. So we'll just pull this negative two, which is on the denominator down here out of the integral completely. So now this seems like I said, doesn't seem like it got us anywhere because now we have E's and U's all stuck together. However, look at what our U was. It was negative T squared. Well, that's kind of interesting because now here we have another T squared. Well, if U is negative T squared, we could figure out that T squared would just be negative u, right? If we just multiply both sides by negative one, we get t squared equals negative u. 
Well, now what we can do, if we know t squared equals negative u, we can put negative u in for t squared right here. So that's just going to get us uh, negative u times e to the u du with a negative one half out front. And then again, we can pull our negative out from our integral and it's going to cancel with our negative sign here. So actually, the only thing we have to integrate now is we just have one half times the integral of u times e to the u, which definitely looks a lot simpler than the integral we started with of t cubed times e to the negative t squared. Now what we can do, like the problem suggested, now that we've done the u substitution, is we can apply integration by parts. So this is going to end up working out very similarly to the second half of the last two problems I did. Um, but basically, and this is uh, just kind of a, a notational problem, what I'm actually going to do, because our integration by parts formula uses u and dv, I'm going to change these to x's. Instead of integrating u times e to the u, we'll integrate x times e to the x. Now, I think I've actually made another video on how to do this exact um, integration. And changing the variable like this, it does not change the problem at all. It's the exact same thing. All we've done is replace our u with x exactly. And that's why I say when you're doing u substitution, never say u equals x or u equals t. It doesn't get you anywhere because it results in the exact same problem, the exact same integral. So now what we can do is we can apply our integration by parts formula, which just means we need to find our u, find our dv. We would then find our du and our v and then use the formula. I'll just jot the formula over here. The formula is the integral of u times dv equals u times v minus the integral of v times du. So again, our u is going to be the thing that's better to take the derivative of. Our dv is the thing that's better to take the integral of. Looking at our two options here, x and e to the x, e to the x is not going to be better or worse because e to the x is a function where the derivative and the integral is exactly the same. Kind of similar to the trig functions where they're the same but differing by a constant, except e to the x is actually exactly the same. If we take the derivative of e to the x, it's e to the x. If we take the antiderivative of e to the x, it's still just e to the x. So this one makes no difference at all. However, x is usually going to be better to take the derivative of than the antiderivative. Because the derivative of x, you know, if we say u equals x, our du is just going to be 1 dx. Which 1 is a pretty great thing to kind of introduce in there. So we'll make our e to the x dx be our dv. The integral of e to the x is just e to the x. So now that we've figured out these four pieces, we can apply the formula here. So we're going to get u times v, so x times e to the x, minus the integral of v times du, so minus e to the x times 1 dx, which is just e to the x dx. And then again, we still have this 1 half out here. And all this stuff here, this is very important to make sure that you put parentheses around this because what this formula tells us is that this integral here is equivalent to u times v minus the integral of v times du, which is what we have inside the brackets here. So whatever constant you have out here needs to distribute to both of these things. That is very important. If you don't put those parentheses around there, you're going to end up with the wrong answer. So what we can go ahead and do now is distribute our one half into there. So that would be uh, one half x e to the x minus one half times the integral of e to the x dx. The integral of e to the x dx is just e to the x. So this, oh wait, nope, sorry. Hold on a second. Yes, we are not done yet. There's one more thing we need to do. Because, remember, we did a substitution, um, which we have not undone yet. So the last, the last kind of step of u substitution is to then undo your substitution, right? We decided that u equals negative t squared, but now we need to kind of undo that. Uh, and this is kind of a weird situation because right here, I switched from u to x. I just decided that x and u were the same because of this weird notational thing with, you know, the fact that the integration by parts formula uses x or uses u. I'm sorry. So basically right here, I kind of made the decision artificially that u equals x and I just changed the variable there. 
So we need to go back up, up here to our substitution of u equals negative t squared. Well, u equals x. So therefore, x equals negative t squared. So we need to take that all the way down to here, keeping in mind that x equals negative t squared and substitute that back in. So what we basically have to do is go to all of our x's and replace them with negative t squared. So actually, our final answer is going to end up being uh, 1 half negative one half because it's negative t squared times t squared times e to the t squared minus one half e to the negative t squared which we could uh, kind of factor out uh, an e to the sorry this should be e to the negative t squared here so we could factor out um, a negative one half e to the negative t squared out of this a negative one half e to the negative t squared times if we take negative one half e to the negative t squared out of here we're just going to have a t squared there if we take it out of here including the negative sign that we pulled out we're going to have plus one so this would be our final integral and our final answer Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button down below. It's a huge help to my channel so I can keep making more videos like this. And like I said, both of the formulas that we went over in this video, U substitution and integration by parts, are both on my integral calculus cheat sheet or my calculus two study guide. If you wanna check that out, there's a link down in the description below. I think you'll find that very helpful as you work through integral calculus. And if you wanna keep learning about integration, I have made a lot of other videos on those. Be sure to check those out over there and hope to see you next time, thanks.